will enter under the stars and stripes. He told us that even though he has trumpeted his Mexican heritage in the recent past and gone well out of his way to assure all of his fans that he feels Mexican, that what happened last week has made him feel more American than ever. And you saw American former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson over Vargas's right shoulder as he prepares to enter the ring. Jim, this is Var only Vargas's eighth fight in three years, and he's still 23 years old. One of the problems with some of these fighters have won titles at very young ages, they don't get to fight as much, they stay out of the gym, they get out of condition, they're not learning. That is what has happened to Vargas. For his part, Vargas and his trainer, Eduardo Garcia, say there were no hijinks and there was no failure of application in the lead up to this fight that he's as well conditioned as he can be to fight Flores. Having learned the lessons he did, he probably is. But it's interesting that his handlers were afraid to really make the case that he had to get in the gym because being so successful, they share in that success. And maybe Rivera with a single right hand in the second round made the case for them. Here's the record for young Vargas. 20 wins in a row before his loss to Felix Trinidad. Then the victory over Rivera. 19 of his 21 wins by KO. As you watch tonight's telecast, you can log on to hbo.com slash boxing where you can listen to live corner audio. Choose which trainer and cornerman you'd like to listen to. Also, expert commentary. Check CompuBox punch stats. See round-by-round -round photos. Or chat with other fans. You don't have to do all that. You can just watch the fight and listen to us if you want to. But if you want to participate on all those levels, hbo.com slash boxing is the way to go. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions and all that will go with them. Ladies and gentlemen, 11 days ago, the United States of America was viciously and violently attacked by terrorists, taking thousands and thousands of innocent lives. On behalf of the fighters, fans, and all involved in this event tonight, on behalf of 300 million Americans who now stand shoulder to shoulder with broken hearts, but unbreakable in their resolve and unity. And for the billions of America's friends and allies around the world, from all of us to the loved ones and families of those who are lost on that day, we will forever feel your pain. We will forever share your grief. We promise they will never be forgotten. And we promise with every breath, with every heartbeat, justice, not terror, shall prevail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we would like to follow the tradition of boxing. Your attention please. And we would like the timekeeper at ringside At this time, in the tradition of boxing, we would like the timekeeper at ringside to pay tribute to those who came to their final resting place in western Pennsylvania, to those who perished at the Pentagon, to the thousands who are lost forever at the World Trade Center, and to the heroes on that day who gave their lives to save others. To those victims, we will now Call a memorial ten bells. Would everyone please rise and stand in silence? Rest in peace forever. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the national anthem of the United States of America.
So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. We're so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free Special thanks to the Las Vegas Academy and the Mandrigals, and special thanks to our color guard here this evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas main events, is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA IBA Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Miller Lite. And in addition to the victims of September 11th, this event is dedicated to the memory of Jillian Kerkorian and the great Sandy Sadler. This belt is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. Luther Mack. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this contest on the 10-point must system will be Bill Graham, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, working for the 143rd time in a world title contest, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trimmed with white and weighing in at 153 and one half pounds. An excellent professional record, standing at 42 victories, including 24 victories by knockout, with eight losses. He comes to us from Montebello, California. Here is the WBA number one ranked junior middleweight in the world, Jose Shibata. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing brown trimmed with gold and also weighing 153 and one half pounds. Also an outstanding professional record, consisting of 21 victories in 22 bouts, including 19 knockouts with only one defeat. And he's the youngest ever to win a world title in this division. Here is the pride of La Colonia Boxing, Oxnard, California the former junior middleweight world champion, the Aztec warrior, ferocious Fernando Vargas. Come on, All right, gentlemen, we want to rules in the dressing room. Ya tu la regla en camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Tiene una pelea limpia. Cuidado con los golpes bajos. Watch out with the low punches. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Give me a good, clean, clean fight. Touch him up. God bless you, and God bless America. Shabbat the floor is 
told us that this is a fight with gloves, not a war. It reminds us of all the overblown and overwrought language frequently used in this sport and others. Now that we know what real heroes and real courage are. Larry, I gather listening to the guys talk that they both have a lot of respect for each other. I indeed, uh, Manuel, you, you have a feeling that Vargas probably isn't all that comfortable with the prospect of fighting Shibata Flores. That's correct. I think they're good friends uh, boxing-wise and I think socially, but I think he still feels a little bit of a respect factor coming into this fight for Flores. But normally, after a guy has been boxing with someone, say for two years, how long they've boxed, and Flores was the role of the employee, if he was really having the better of Vargas, I would say he would not have been around that long. So it lets me know that those workouts probably favored. And Vargas. isn't there a mental barrier that, that's just difficult for the former sparring partner to overcome? He's been in the ring so often with Vargas where his job was his not job. necessarily to threaten him, but to be a target. That's correct. He was actually playing a role of as an employee. And it's very difficult for a guy to get out of that. Round one begins cautiously. Vargas says that he realizes the style he showed against Felix Trinidad, particularly in the first round, was the wrong one for him. That he's a boxer, not a brawler. That he must employ angles and strategy in order to be effective in the ring. And that he will not make again the mistake that he made against Trinidad. Many of his critics say, let's wait and see. Yeah, you know, his his on, description of himself now is he's going to be back to being an intelligent boxer puncher. Which he was when we saw him in his best fight against Ike Corte. And in his other great performance yes. against Yuri Boy Campus. And Mal, uh, Mal, 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 Mal Marquez. Marquez yes. All clinical boxing performances. He has a lot of talent, very basically sound, fundamentally. Much more of a crispier punch, but nevertheless, was we found out one solid punch on the chin can neutralize all of those advantages. Well, what we didn't know is that it could happen to him. <laughs> Most critics say that Flores' big shortcoming is that he doesn't have a lot of punching power. Well, and in response to that, Flores has promised, I'll knock Vargas out. Well, he's already landed two or three very clean punches, and they didn't seem to bother Vargas at all. Well, I think the fact that he believes that he can hurt Vargas, right, and that's Bring possibly up, also the only way that he can win this fight, means that in his mind, he's set himself to be a puncher. Jumping in with a lead right hook is Shibata Flores. Remember, even though Flores is taller, Vargas on paper has the longer reach. Flores with a straight left hand, and now chopping overhand right. He's able to land against Fernando Early. What I've noticed in the past, Emmanuel, is that he tends Vargas to come in too squarely and not at an angle. Is he coming in more at an angle now? I think he's definitely coming in more at an angle, and he should be boxing more. He's looking for a big punch. He's doing everything that he said he wouldn't do. Water here. You gotta be careful with the left hook. He throws it in the knee. Be careful. Work, work intelligent. This fight's gonna be over soon. That's all. That's all he's got is that, that left hook. Be careful. You're doing fine. Yeah. Let's get some Vaseline on him. Don't, don't get over anxious. You're going to be the champion. You're going to work very intelligently. You're too, you're too smart for him. You're too smart. You're too intelligent. Interpreter Ray Torres working in both corners tonight as both trainers prefer to speak Spanish to their fighters. Come on, let's go. Hold time, hold time. Hold time, man. Let's go. Eduardo Garcia a little slow out of the ring, and Joe Cortez finally allows them to go for the second round. At his best, Fernando Vargas is a highly effective body punter, particularly with the left hand. I didn't see a single landed body punch in the first round from Vargas. No, Vargas seemed to be sitting back very content to try to counter with his right hand, or his left, after 
Flores comes in because Flores is a little bit slow sometimes and he leaves himself open after he punches and he's setting himself to counter punch. But in the meantime, he should be moving him more, jabbing more, and boxing more where he can relax Flores. But every punch that he's fighting is a power punch. Topping right hand by Flores, momentarily stunned Vargas, landing on the side of Vargas's cheek. Flores the aggressor. And, been and he catches Vargas again with a little right. He's, he's been very physical. And, and in fact, Vargas is, is fighting the wrong fight. And now Vargas lands the right kind of left hook. And Flores goes to one knee. First knockdown of the fight. Flores thought he had Vargas hurt. Was moving in to try to put more hurt on him and caught the left hook. He's not as coordinated as Fernando is, but still, Fernando is fighting a fight that is still dangerous for him because he's got so much talent that he doesn't have to take these risks if he would just use his boxing talents and much more crispier movements. Now Vargas begins to go to the body. You saw the double left hook upstairs. Flory's trying to stay out of harm's way as Vargas looks to capitalize on the damage that created the knockdown. The knockdown was a good punch, but it was just as much credit to the fact that Shiflato is off balance and so awkward when he punches. Battle of lead hands so far. Flores scoring almost exclusively with his right. Vargas with his left. You wonder when Fernando might begin to try to employ a straight right hand. Yes, because he's a much more accurate uh, a, a puncher than And it's the classic Flores. tool against the southpaw for a conventional yeah, fighter. The straight right hand lead once he gets to a pulse. Flores' natural lack of speed and coordination is going to be a big factor going down the stretch. Flores already seems to be breathing through his mouth. I don't know if he's gotten overexcited about being in his first big fight. Or if that's his natural way. Outside of the knockdown, it was another pretty good right for, a round for Flores. Pretty good round for Flores. He may get knocked down a few more times a lot just because of his bad balance. Shibata Flores with his awkward style has been effective, but that one punch cost him a 10-8 round. And you can see as he went down, he was trying to regain his balance to prevent going down, but he was in a bad position to do so. Interesting start to the fight. Vargas not yet in peak form. Flores coming out throwing more punches than Fernando, but Fernando with one crisp left hook counter, perhaps seizing the early scoring advantage. But Fernando's got much better speed. I think he just needs to pick up his attack a little bit more, particularly operating off of his jab and his straight right hand right down the pipe. Two weeks ago in Reno, Nevada, we saw a textbook demonstration by Marco Antonio Barrera as to how to take apart a southpaw. Oh, he he showed you every nuance of how to do it. Yes, he did. He did everything perfect. And and uh, Vargas has not yet shown the the full range of tools that a conventional fighter with an advantage can use in that situation. Oh. Notably, the absence of the straight right hand, which Barrera was using with tremendous effect. And also possibly being a southpaw, Shibata, and also throwing punches from such a wide angle, that can sometimes get you off track and unorganized. But the fact that they have boxed so much for two years together in the gym, 
I thought Vargas would have established a little bit better control and dominance at this point in time. Good straight right hand to the body by Vargas in that last exchange. Three, three straight body three straight. punches by Flores. I think one of the problems that Vargas has is that Flores isn't being as consistently aggressive as he normally is because he is trying to show a little bit more patience and versatility just as Vargas is. Great point, Larry, because in Vargas's best performances against Quarte and Campus, he was fighting relentless, come forward, aggressive fighters who walked to him every time. Flores is changing it up a little. Now the straight right hand begins to show up in Vargas's arsenal. Fernando's energy level seeming to go up just a little bit in yes. this round. And uh, Shibato, as Larry said earlier, seemed like he's having a breathing problem. He's got his mouth gapped open this early, and it hasn't even been a very fast-paced fight. So I'm wondering if he's... Hard right, right hand by Flores rocks Vargas's head back. Boxing, mark these dates on your calendars. Next Saturday night, TVKO pay-per-view. Felix Trinidad and Brevard Hopkins battle it out for the undisputed middleweight championship. The fight postponed from September 15 to the 29th. On October 6th, Boxing After Dark returns with rising star Julio Diaz taking on Angel Manfredi. And November 17, TVKO pay-per-view brings you the rematch of Hasim Rahman versus Lennox Lewis for Rahman's heavyweight championship of the world. HBO. The heart and soul of boxing. The baby there is uh, one of Fernando Vargas's children. There's Fernando Jr. on the lap of Fernando's mother. And that's the Vargas contingent. Um, Fernando says, you know, I'm fighting for the purpose of putting food on my children's table. So therefore, tonight there is no friendship with Shibata Flores. You know, after what I saw the first few rounds, if I was in the corner of Fernando Vargas, I would change strategy and have him to go directly to Shibata Flores and try to engage him in exchanges because if he makes Flores punch very rapidly, he would have the advantage because Flores basically loops wide punches. It means that Vargas would always beat him to the punch with short punches and also his balance is much better. He should go right to him and keep shooting short punches where he's much better coordinated than Flores is. Body punching Jim War for the moment. <laughs> Vargas getting the best of Flores. Big left hand by Flores. Drives Fernando back into the ropes. He's fighting Flores at the wrong distance. Just enough where those lunge and punches that he shoots can be effective. If we shorten the gap up, he would be more effective. Hey! Hey! By CompuBox numbers, Vargas landed half of his power shots and threw 27 of them in round three. So his activity level has been picking up. Good jab by Vargas. Sets up the right hand. Three. Bring out. Again, no, at his best, Vargas <laughs> has a thudding jab. Yeah, but he needs to use it more. Yep. Doesn't use it so, enough. Yeah, and, and, and Flo Flores is, is a lunger. When he shoots, if he misses a punch, if you notice, he almost falls down and loses his balance and momentum just off of bad balance alone. But see, once again, Vargas right, is right, fighting right, at right, the right. wrong distance right, right, without right, jabbing. One of the other things that Marco Antonio Barrera accomplished against the Southpaw two weeks ago in Reno was to destroy the myth that you can't use your jab against the Southpaw. He made it work like a symphony. And Vargas has begun to use his jab more frequently here in round four. It looks like it could set up a lot of good stuff for him if he'd stay with it. It was the best display I've ever saw of a right hand of boxing, a Southpaw, and beating him with the left jab. But he did it so effortless.
fights. Round four, the most one-sided of the fight so far, as Fernando Vargas seems on the verge of finding a formula that might allow him to bust Shibata up. That's the way he should continue to fight him at this distance right here. Because Flores is not that coordinated. He's going to look very awkward trying to punch. Our shots in round four. By far, Vargas' best round of the fight. He landed 18 of 30 by CompuBox numbers. That's a 60% connect rate. If he's going to land his power shots that accurately against Flores, Flores will have to look for another way of fighting against Fernando. And there's a straight left hand down the pipe. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through four? Okay, Jim, I got it three rounds to one, 39-36, ferocious Fernando Vargas. Uh, of course, I get the first round of Shibata Flores. He was the busier guy. Fernando started slow. But since then, Fernando Vargas is just one heck of a hard puncher. And I think he's winning this fight on punching power. And I think the judges see that. And the one thing he does, he goes to, he goes to his right instead of to his left, which is the wrong way to go, and makes up for it with punching power. I have it two rounds apiece. Vargas ahead by a point because of the knockdown. And Vargas now is fighting a much closer distance fight and being more effective at that. for Flores. Vargas smiling. Great right hand to the body and a big left hook upstairs by Vargas in that exchange. Hey! Bring up, bring up, bring up. again by Flores. Vargas momentarily wobbled by that. Flores not a big puncher, no. or else he might have done some damage to Fernando with some of the clean shots he's landed early. But he's given Vargas a oh, lot of problems. Up, Vargas seemingly is, is spurring or boxing with him for the first time. He seems to be still very uncomfortable and can't adjust to Flores' style of punches and, and his delivery. Well, sometimes you can try to be too intelligent in a prize fight. It's still a fight. <laughs> And, and, and Flores comes back and catches him after he lands those punches and pulls back and relaxes to admire his work. And Flores comes with those off the wall punches and hits him right on the chin. Seconds out. Vargas's purse for this fight, incidentally, is about a million dollars. Flores is getting $315,000, roughly 10 times more than he's ever earned before. And very happy about it. Yep. Very satisfied. Stop punching in front of this guy because it seems like he'll punch and he'll relax and think that everything is safe and he stops. And always Shibata comes back. Yeah. 
Shibata showing his will. Vargas has the greater skill. Good left hook inside by Vargas. But he stays at mid-range and allows Flores to rake him with a right hand. Now Flores' mouthpiece has fallen onto the ring canvas. Joe Cortez has to wait for a lull in the action. I don't know if Flores can have his mouthpiece back. I'm not sure Cortez saw that happen. And this is where Vargas needs to stay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go. He's a pretty decent in fighter. He's an excellent body puncher. He's the stronger fighter. He should be right there, Emmanuel. And better coordinated. But I think a lot of those right hands that we think that he's landing, I don't think he has successfully landed that much. And Fernando, I think, is well aware that Shibata has no mouthpiece. As he goes after him and Flores... Like the Vargas we came to know before his fight with oh, Trinidad second, no. in this round. Second, no, fuera. Yes, but he's having problems second, no, landing no. solid blows with Flores. Second, no, fuera, and I, and I, the way it looks, I think it's a good chance that this fight may go the limit. Although Fernando just landed 40-some-odd punches in that round oh, okay, okay. by CompuBox numbers, including 40 oh, of 53 go. power shots. At 76%, I don't know when I've seen a higher number. So Flores is becoming all too open a target for Vargas's stuff inside. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> I don't know, Emmanuel. I'm seeing him landing hot shots. I think a lot of those punches are being blocked and rolled. I think that, that, that Shibata Flores is rolling a lot of punches also. They, they can catching them and deflecting them with, with the gloves. Okay, five rounds to one, 59-54, ferocious Fernando Vargas. I, I mean, he's doing all that really heavy, hard hitting. Get him up, get him and basically, that's how boxing is scored. Clean, effective punching is really 95% of scoring around. Ferocious Fernando Vargas, virtually unmarked in there, landing the cleaner, harder shots. Shibata Flores, his eye closing up. I mean, he's just taking the harder shots. Vargas, five to one. Yeah, Flores' right eye has a mouse under and an abrasion above. You can see the facial swelling around his eyes. Vargas' punches beginning to take effect. Stop! I got even if, even if he is rolling away from the impact of a lot of them, man. Yeah, and the fact that he's getting tired, but he's having a problem holding that mouthpiece in his mouth, and I think that's going to be a big problem yeah, too going down the stretch. Because evidently he's going to get it knocked out or spit it out a lot more as the fight progresses. How much worse is it to take a punch when your mouthpiece is out? Well, if you get hit properly in the chin, you can get a bad cut inside of your mouth because the teeth cuts into the lip, and sometimes you actually can just end up getting uh, your teeth knocked out. The way Jack Dempsey knocked out five of Jess Willard's teeth in the first round, yep. July 4th, 1919. Yeah, but he had concrete in, in, in his head. Well, they say that. Yeah, yeah plas right. plaster <laughs> Paris. Yeah. Even with a mouthpiece in, you can do that. <laughs> is finding that the intelligent thing to do in this fight is to fight. And that's what he's doing. He's, he's fighting at the right distance, right there. So his coordination is a big enough advantage to him. Oh, we got it. Come on. Hey, <laughs> big up. shot by Vargas there. When he commits to his body punches, he can really break an opponent down. Good left hook by Vargas. Target practice. We ain't going 12 rounds. No, no. 
Didn't look like friendship oh, right there. Oh, no. Hasn't looked like friendship the last couple of rounds. Joe Cortez stops the fight. Chipata Flores taken apart in these past two rounds by Fernando Vargas. A very good professional finish. Very professional. A good fight for Vargas, but I don't think he convinced everybody that he is the fighter we all thought he was before Trinidad. He still has a way to go to see that. For the next fight. He didn't need it to beat Sibata Flores. The question is, can he get a fight with Oscar De La Hoya? That's his goal. And the fight ended more with a combination of things and fatigue setting in, I think, and the fact that he was just so much more talented than Shibato, more so than any just one particular punch. And, and he, he stepped but, inside that ring. Here's the finish, Emmanuel. And that yes. straight right hand to the body set everything up. Yes, because he was having problems landing clean punches to the head. So then he goes inside, backs Flores into the corner, and this is what prompted Cortez eventually to figure that Shibata had had enough. Pretty good power with both hands. Just so many punches. He was trying to get away from the punches, but it was coming in profusion, as Howard Cosell would say, and he couldn't get away from all of them. Howard's not around. You may adopt, <laughs> you may adopt profusion as your own now, Emmanuel. <laughs> and now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this ball. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez reaches the count of 10 at two minutes. 59 seconds of round number seven. The winner and once again champion, now the two-time junior middleweight champion of the world, Hiroshis Fernando 